Hi, welcome to this new video about Apollo.io and its connection to a spot. Last time we saw that Apollo can help you keep your contact and company information up to date automatically. And today we will focus on the main feature of Apollo.io, which is find your targeted leads and automatically determine if they are a potential fit or not. So before starting this video, I just want to tell you that I have an Apollo affiliate link in the description below. So if you want to try out this tool, don't hesitate to use the link in the description to help me grow as a channel. So before going into the detail, let's just summarize what Apollo can do for this video. Basically, he has a database of a lot of different companies and contacts, and you can access a lot of information about those contacts and companies, such as job title, company, number of employees, etc., etc. But most most of all, you can request their LinkedIn profile, their email address, and their phone number. So basically, you can put a lot of filters in this database to identify your perfect leads and then request their address, email, phone number, and LinkedIn profile to be able to start contacting them and sell your product. But before telling you how it works, we need to talk about the connection with HubSpot. If you go to Admin Settings and All Settings, and you click on Integration, you will be able to connect your CRM and a spot is one of the possibility you have. The goal of connecting a spot with Apollo, it means that they will connect the data. So a spot will be able to receive leads that you generate with Apollo, but Apollo will also be able to get information in your spot portal to know if you already have this specific lead or not. There's two ways of seeing it. A lot of people will say it's good to central, like to connect all the data and centralize all the data. So basically every time you will generate a lead with Apollo, it will go to HubSpot. Personally, I don't really like this approach. I like to to keep my spot portal clean with qualified leads. So what I would do is like I would generate this list on Apollo, export the CSV, use a cold reach email tool such as Lemlist, and then redirect them with a spot form or a spot meeting tool to make sure in my spot I will only have qualified leads. But if you want to have all your even code leads in your spot, I really advise you to connect your spot portal with Apollo. You will just need to find a spot here, click on connect and just give the, the needed authorization to Apollo to automatically connect your spot portal. Then by clicking on view, you will be able to map the different information. So you can see that you have different tabs for different objects, such as contact, accounts, deals, and activities. And for each object, you will be able to map the stages. We don't need to take care of that specific mapping contact stages yet, because Apollo is also a tool to allow you to do cold outreach email campaigns, but we will not take care of it in this video. You will be able also to map fields. So you will have like native fields, like such as first name, last name, job title, phone number, email, etc., etc. I really advise you to connect the LinkedIn pro, uh, URL profile because Apollo is using LinkedIn to be able to identify a specific contact in their database. So basically, if you connect your spot portal to make Apollo understand that you already have this specific lead, if it doesn't have a LinkedIn URL profile, it might be a bit hard for Apollo to identify it. So you can just click on add field mapping and say LinkedIn URL and you will find the LinkedIn URL in HubSpot and you save. You can also add custom spot properties and map it to Apollo custom properties to be able to have a better segmentation. Let's say you want you have a list of target companies, you can tag them as target companies is any of yes in a spot and connect this company property to this Apollo company property and in your filter say I only want contact that belong to a company which has the custom property target company is equal to any of yes. So you can like do your mapping based on what you need. For normal use, the default usage is enough. Just add the LinkedIn URL just to make sure you don't have duplicates. And you can go to the next tab, which is data rating rules, which will basically give you the possibility to choose the ownership of the data. Let's say that if a spot has already a name for a specific contact, do you let Apollo override the information with Apollo's first name? Or you just want to autofill when it's empty and don't mess with your current spot data. It depends on you. You just need to take the time to do it for every different property you linked. And then you have the sync. Basically, by pressing this contact, you will automatically update all the contacts, uh, the hotspot contacts you have into Apollo. It takes like 15 minutes to uh, work, but you will make sure Apollo has the most updated data to play with based on your hotspot account. And then you need to click on push contacts, which means that every time you add a specific Apollo lead into a list, it will automatically go to HubSpot. Then if you want, you can create a single line text property in a spot saying like created by Apollo and it will automate, you will choose it in this menu and it will be automatically populated with the value 
Apollo when a lead will be created from Apollo so it will be easier for you to identify them but you can identify them with other properties such as original source we will see it later. If you have decided to connect your Uspot CRM and you map all your different objects based on what you want you're ready to start finding your leads and to be able to identify our targeted leads we just need to go to the left sidebar and click on people and you arrive to the filter record page. Few things we need to understand about it we have views so the views are like pre-saved filters you already did to be able to find easily all the previous filtering you did you have what we call lists list is when you want to save a contact and map it to your spot you just put them into lists you have the filters parameters that we will see right after and you have the total net new and save tab total are all the leads that Apollo identified that currently match your filters. The saved are all those leads that you already own either on Apollo list or in your HubSpot portal that you connected beforehand to HubSpot. And net new is simply the subscription between total and saved. It's all the people that match your filters that you don't own yet. And so now that we saw that, let's see about our filtering. For this example, I wanted to be able to find all the head of marketing or director of marketing or CMOs of medium-sized company that have HubSpot as a technology. So let's see the different filters I did. So first, as I said, we can create lists. So lists are either like previous uh, enrichment you did or imports that you'd made to uh, uh, Apollo. I already did an outreach campaign in 2024, so I don't want to recon recontact those same leads. So I import the list of the leads I already contacted from 2024 to Apollo to be able to exclude them. Then you have Persona. Persona is if you do a lot of different lists based on the same criteria. So let's say every time the CMOs of Media Science Company, you can pre-register them into a Persona and use it to simplify your filtering job. Email status is if you do a lot of email communication, you can only decide to display contacts that have a verified email or unavailable email. Unverified email depends on what you want to do. And then you have the job Job titles. Job titles, you can either include job titles with similar titles. So if you type CMO, they will understand CMO and Chief Marketing Officer, for instance. You can exclude some specific titles and you can play with management level and department and function. So in my case, I have c suite head and director and they give you exactly the number of contacts that will be added to the specific view based on your other filters. So if I add founders I will have 298 leads that will match my other filters in this final listing. And for department and job function, I choose master marketing. Why master marketing? Because you can choose a specific field like marketing, but if you want to be even more precise, you can click here and choose the exact marketing field you want. Let's say I only want the lead generation manager. I will choose manager in management level and I will just choose this specific lead generation. And here only the lead generation manager will show up in this page. Then you can include or exclude specific company list or company names based on their name or based on their company domain name. You can include exclude location, like classic filtering. You can choose the number of employees that the company obviously have, and you can either choose an industry or include or exclude it keywords. Me, I want to propose my Uspot consulting services, so I don't want to target Uspot agencies. So I exclude the keyword Uspot agency to make sure they don't show up in this final listing. Not 100% working. Some companies they will identify as marketing agency and don't mention Uspot that much, but at least it make a first uh, cleaning of the final list. Then you can have buying intent. It's not working really well because it's hard to get this data, but for my intent topic, was a spot consulting provider so I could see if some companies were identified as they really want to purchase a, a spot consulting service on high, medium, low or known. As you can see, I don't select anything because uh, this buying intent doesn't give good results for now. You can have a lead scoring score, but I will advise you to connect your company lead scoring in a spot to Apollo to have like a score that fits way more your business needs. And my favorite filter is technologies. Basically, you can choose to filter your company based on the technology they use. So for me, as I provide a spot service, it's really cool that I can select companies that use HubSpot. But when you open the, the tab, you can see a lot of different technologies. So if you're selling like services or products based on a specific SaaS, it's really easy for you to be able to identify those clients. Of course, after you have like based on revenue, based on the funding and the different seeds or series they have, you can see if they currently are hiring for a specific job. So for instance, if they are hiring for a spot, cons uh, a spot manager, maybe I could put this filter to identify companies that really want to hire someone right now 
now that can provide my service. And you also have signals like, does this contact get a new role, got promoted, uh, get an award, etc., etc. Those like technology, signal, funding, buying intent, etc., they are a bit hard for Apollo to identify, so it will reduce a lot your final listing. But if you want to be really precise and identify these like gold nuggets, maybe you can try to play with them to see what's happened in your final result. So now let's say we are happy about this final listing. You just check quickly and yes, it match what you want. You just need to select them and you can just select one page, so 25 out of 13,000. Select this page or select all. 10,000 is a maximum for one specific export. And you can choose the number of people per company. Spoiler alert, it doesn't work every time. Every time I export like a file of 1,000 uh, leads, I will still have like a company, two company or three company that have a multiple people for uh, my specific research. But at least it reduces the final cleaning of your file. When you're happy, you click on apply and you have those 25 leads that are ready to get enriched. Two options now, either you directly push them to a spot or you add them to a list. I really advise you to add them to a list to play the full Apollo rule. So you just click on add to a list, create a new list. You give it a name, so 25 sample for video. You click on update and your list is getting created. To find it, you just need to go to the list and you will find it here. So when you click on the list, you will find only the 25 people. Actually, it's just 20 because I want to show up only good emails. So there's five emails we didn't manage to find, but here you can find that we have the 20 email of those leads. And if you go to HubSpot, you can see that today at 12, 11 p.m., which is right now, the 20 leads got added to my specific portal. So that was how you can get the targeted leads of your business directly into your HubSpot CRM. But I mentioned you in the beginning of the video that we can also automatically determine if they are good fit or not. And for that, we will use a new feature of a Apollo, which is run AI prompt. So basically you can run AI prompt that will interact with the database of Apollo. You can even run your own AI prompt, but I advise you at least to understand how it works to play with a template. So you click on start with a template and because Apollo is a lead generator, but also a cold rich email tool, you will have two kinds of prompts, either like generate a message or personalize outreach or improve your targeting. And is which one I want to see right now. So you click here and you can see that here you have research and evaluate a company for fit. So you just need to click on try it and it will automatically create free prompts that will get played one by one to determine if the company is a good fit. So if you click on it, you can see the full prompt is really complete, as you can see. Basically, to tell you quickly what it does, it does the, the first one will analyze your website to see what you're doing and uh, what are your product and services. This one will do the same for the contact company to see what are they looking for and what are they doing, etc. And the final analysis will just tell you, okay, it's a potential fit. We don't have enough data. It's not a good fit or it's an amazing fit. When you click on it, you will have at the end different qualification status, disqualify, possible fit, high value fit or not enough information. The goal of this prompt is at the end to get one of these four possibilities and to explain to you with the detail why it chose this specific result. You can save the step, save and run and say, I want it to run for the first 10 row, let's say. And here you see that the AI is running. For all views, 10 leads, he determine what my company, HS Simple, is doing. Then he do the same for the end contact company. And here it will give me qualification status, possible fit, possible fit, possible fit, possible fit. It means I did my uh, segmentation good. I don't put that much information on my website. So it's hard for the AI to determine if it's a good fit. But basically, I know that there is not, not any contacts that are a non-fit. Now that we get this extra information, we might want to get this information, the detail of the company of the lead, and if it's a good fit or not in our HubSpot. So we just need to map those fields into a spot properties. What will you do? You will go to admin setting, integration, HubSpot, and in our contacts fields, you will just add those map fields. So you want to add those different guidelines. So sorry, it's a bit messy, but we have the final analysis, the determined research guideline, and the research target company. You add those fields, and then you just need to map them with the uh, with a spot field you would have created. So we have AI question one I created. So determined research guideline is the analysis of my company. So it's question one. Research targeting target company is question two. And final analysis of qualification is the 
final answer is equation three. So you just need to map it and to save. That way, under each contact page, you will find those final prompt results under AI question one, AI question two, and AI question three. So AI question one, we don't really care. AI question two, it gives you more context for your sales, so you can put it in your contact view. And AI question three, we could use it for a workflow to automatically determine a fit. So to do so, let's go to a spot and create a workflow for that. You just need to go to settings and create a new property. It's a contact property. You click on create, you name it like Apollo fit results, for instance, and new issues, select a field type, and you will choose drop down select. And as a value, you will put all the qualification status. So we have disqualified, we have possible fit, high value fits, and not enough information. You create, and then you just need to create a simple workflow. It's a contact-based workflow. And as a trigger environment, you will choose the criteria AI creation free is known. So every time Apollo give us an answer and send it to a spot, this contact will get enrolled. And you just need to create a if then branch based on disqualified. It will be contact property AI creation free contains any of disqualified, then another branch that will be potential fit. Same thing, AI equation free contains any of potential fit. Another branch of high value fit. Contact property AI equation free contains any of high value fit. And the last branch, which is not enough information, add criteria AI equation free contains any of not enough information. You save. And then you just need to populate the property we created, which is CRM edit records Apollo fit results for disqualified is any of disqualified. Clone this action to potential fit, modify the result by possible fit. I just failed, I need to edit the potential fit to possible fit because it's a value that Apollo gives us. Then for high value fits and then for not enough information. And that way, when you review and publish it, every time Apollo will populate this last prompt property, it will be connected to this AI question free in HubSpot and the contact will get enrolled and automatically we have a Apollo fit result value as disqualified, possible fit, high value fit and not enough information. Because it's a drop down select, you can use that, use this property as segmentation for your database. You can create specific lists or specific nurturing workflows or specific communication for those different fit levels. So that was a big understanding on how you can connect your HubSpot to your Apollo account, generate all the targeting leads you want with Apollo and automatically qualify them through Apollo AI and HubSpot workflows. I hope this video was clear enough. If it's the case, don't forget to put a thumbs up and to subscribe to this channel. I post a long format video like this one every Wednesday and I post every day like short videos about like the new product features that a spot release every day. Once again, if you want to try out Apollo, you could use my affiliation link in the description below. It's the best way to help me growing this channel. It was Greg. I wish you a great week and see you next Wednesday.